You guys, so last week I met this guy, right? Super smooth, super cute, Italian. His name, Dr. Drake Remore. Oh. <laughs> okay guys, you're gonna have to excuse me and my weird, mainly focused on the serious friends humor. Obviously, I'm kidding. But this video actually does have to do with Dr. Drake Remore slash Joey Triviani. So this video is gonna be a kind of like funny take on the celebrity book club trend that is all over booktube when booktubers read book recommendations by celebrities. I am also doing that in this video but the celebrity I chose is a fictional celebrity. Joey Tribbiani, star of Days of Our Lives, well he ain't real but that did not stop me from reading his only book recommendation. Now if you are an avid friends lover such as me you know that the only book Joey is known to have read in the entire series, or like actually there too, but the only book he ever recommends is this one, The Shining by Stephen King. There's an entire episode about him reading this and then Rachel and Joey are kind of like uh, swapping their favorite books of all times, Rachel's being The Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and Joey's being Stephen King's The Shining. And then Rachel ends up reading this and Joey ends up reading Little Women as well. I actually have planned to read both Stephen King's um, The Shining and Little Women for this video and talk about it because Joey ends up reading and liking both. But because I ended up filming pretty much a reading vlog for The Shining, um, this video is going to be long enough just talking about The Shining and not talking about Little Women. So this is going to be focused on Joey Tribbiani's original book recommendation. But we do not only want to read like a funny book recommendation by a celebrity. The bigger question I kind of want to answer with this video is a recommendation by a non-book lover. Do you respect it more than the recommendation of a book lover or less? Are you part of team A? Hell, why you know you read about a book a decade, idiot? Or are you part of team B? Oh my god, if even you like this book, it must be so good. I'm gonna go get it right now. Which one are you on? Personally, I don't know, like obviously it always depends on the person, on the book, on the circumstances. I'm not claiming that there's a right or wrong answer to this in any way, shape or form, but let's at least try to find out what my answer would be for this specific Joy Tribbiani case, shall we? So this is going to be a fair disclaimer, there are going to be hella spoilers in this video, so if you do not know yet the plot of the book, the movie, if you don't know anything about this and you don't want to, I feel this video is not going to be the one for you. But if you already know it, or if you're fine with being spoiled, keep on watching. But real quick, the spoiler-free summary of this book is about Jack Torrance taking on the job of winter caretaker of a hotel in the Colorado mountains. And he goes there to spend the winter months there with his family, his wife, Wendy, and his son, Danny, and basically take care of the hotel during the off season. But the place is low-key evil, low-key haunted, and real bad shit starts happening. Plus, our little guy Danny, Jack's son, he has this thing called The Shining, which basically is part telepathy, part having visions about the future, but also flashbacks of the past. Okay, Danny, he's a special boy, and he's especially receptive to this evil aura of this hotel, and from there on, chaos, mayhem, slaughter ensues. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into this book. Now, friends, I have started reading this two days ago, roughly, and I'm almost halfway through, more like 40% through at this point. And yeah, so far, it's going really well. It really is a gripping story. I have watched the movie a bunch of years ago. That was like the first, first and only horror movie I've ever watched. But that doesn't take away from the suspense at all. You might think that like, okay, you know what's gonna happen. Does that make it like boring or something or like what's the point of reading it then but not at all it is just as suspenseful because i know what's gonna happen i kind of think so i mean we have at this point arrived at the overlook hotel and jack and his wife and danny have been staying there for like a couple of months now already or like at least a couple of weeks and so far things are still somewhat okay though we definitely already see jack deteriorating into the 
worst version of himself plus from the very beginning but maybe that's that's like things that, that i'm not sure like do i only notice these things because i know what's gonna happen i might not be able to pick them up have i went into this not knowing anything but knowing what i know um i think you could very early on already spot like these spot like these similarities between this um this caretaker who killed his family there like a bunch of decades ago and jack you can already see the parallels between these two mm -hmm. um and of course it is like i definitely enjoy the parts the most that are written out of danny's perspective because it's so fascinating of course to see like his visions and stuff because i know he's not only foreshadowing the events that are going to take place in like a couple of chapters but he's like simultaneously looking into the past seeing what happened there back then but he's also looking into the future seeing what is going to happen with his own father and everything so yeah danny's chapters when he has like these visions shit, they are really freaky even though i know what's going to happen they're still freaky so um plus i wonder if i remember everything because i as i said i watched that movie a couple of years ago like a bunch of years ago so i know that these um that danny's gonna see, start seeing these girls which i think that i mean obviously they would be the the daughters of the caretaker who killed his daughters all these years ago but in the book they're six and eight and i remember in the movie they're twins but maybe they only made them twins in the movie because duh twins are scary at least in horror movies if there's like a pair of twins oh you better run right um so i know that's still gonna happen like red rum that came up really early i thought it was gonna only happen later on the, in the book but i think it was like the first chapter that, that was written out of danny's perspective we already like learned about this term that he sees this word red rum or like that tony his invisible friend keeps telling him about this word red rum and now especially now i'm like at a point where jack is like really yeah starting to go downhill he's starting to be very like because we hear his thoughts like what he's actually saying out loud towards his wife and what he's thinking and he's starting to be really aggressive etc um if you don't know of course jack is a um alcoholic a dry alcoholic at this point but he's so constantly on edge constantly craving a drink plus he has this really bad temper that he often loses control over really violent tendencies and stuff so yeah plus if i remember correctly he's writing a play right now at the overlook hotel and i think i remember from the movie that in the end like his wife like goes through his like uh papers and stuff and sees that he has been like writing the same sentence all over again while well, this entire time he says he's like working on his play and everything is going so well and then later like she has this moment that she realizes that he's been writing a single sentence over and over again oh it's gonna be creepy when that comes up but but you know even though i know it's gonna happen it doesn't mean it's gonna be any less creepy than reading it once it happens anyway um plus um this is something i'm really not that sure about anymore but i think does denny survive i think he does i think the child survives because he runs out into the maze or like into like the snow into the maze and then jack freezes to death that's how the movie ends right so i think the child will survive plus there's a sequel now or like i think it's been a couple of years at this point but there's a sequel so i mean one of them has to survive otherwise how could there be a sequel so i think the boy's gonna survive and then maybe live with the other person he met that has the shining Whew. but yeah it's um it's good but i make a point of not reading it past 11 p.m and that's that Okay guys, I just came back from sitting in a cafe and drinking a coffee and reading my book for a little while and two things happened that I do not remember from the movie. First of all, with Danny, there was like a bathroom scene and it was like, obviously he's gonna have a vision of his mother getting killed in a bathroom at some point, but this time he went into room 217 and there was a body in the bathtub or like he saw one, but it wasn't his mother, it was like this old lady who had been drowned in the water but she gets up 
and then strangles him. Uh, at that point, the chapter ended and I didn't mind that at all. I do not remember that from the movie, but like either they cut it out, like that scene didn't make it into the movie or um, very, it's very likely, I, I don't remember, it's been so many years, but it is very likely that there were scenes when I covered my eyes during the movie and did not look at the screen to protect my gentle soul. So maybe that was one of them because I was like, um, I do not remember this. Plus, um, what was going on with Jack is that he had these kind of hallucinations, maybe let's call them, about the, the, the hedges that have been shaped into animals. And that again, I don't remember if that was part of the movie. I think so, that like at one point he goes crazy with like the hatch saw or what it's called and mutilates all of these hatch animals. But um, what I'm asking myself right now is, does Jack have the shining as well? Because it would make sense that not only Danny has it, but like one of his parents has it too and he like inherited it. And I mean, obviously Jack is going kind of like crazy Plus, like, his bad temper is acting up more and more. Plus, I think in the movie at the end, wasn't it insinuated that, like, the ghost of this former caretaker that killed his family kind of, like, possessed Jack and did all of these things? Because doesn't the movie end in showing a picture of, like, this guy from, like, a bunch of decades ago and he looks exactly like Jack and stuff like that? Like, either that is the case or Jack has The Shining as well and he's... And that's how he's like channeling this other person. I don't even know. But like he, like the thing with like the animals that are kind of like coming to life. He sees them moving and stuff. And now also like through the um, um, the wire that they still have, the, the radio, he heard the voice of his father who tells him to kill his his wife and Danny. So obviously this this could just be like him going like crazy and stuff. But I, I'm trying to think about if there was something like that in the movie as well, because I don't clearly remember. Does Jack have The Shining as well or not? We'll find out, I suppose. Anyway, I got some mud lens on my way back home. So I think I'm going to make myself a little afternoon snack later. But first, I'm going to continue this because like now I am at like the halfway point. Wait, where am I? Here. Yeah, that's pretty much officially halfway through now. And yeah, the it has started to snow. The snow is piling up outside. Things are going downhill any second. Let's go. So guys, I now finished The Shining a couple of days ago. I was really surprised that the book and the movie, they were really different. Like parts that I remembered really clearly from the movie were obviously not part of the book. As in like those freaky twins, they are not part of the book. I remember them so clearly. They are such a staple of the movie. They are nowhere to be found in this one. Plus, again, I'm pretty sure that this whole scene with like the lady coming out of the bathtub trying to strangle Danny, I don't remember that that was in the movie. Maybe they swapped the twins for the freaky old lady. I don't know. Plus, the ending. The ending is also completely different, at least from what I remember. So doesn't it kind of like end in uh, the movie that the hotel basically wins, as in it remains standing, whereas in this book it goes up in flames, which I prefer that ending for sure, but isn't that also like the biggest difference? Plus this, like the most iconic scene out of that entire movie is like when Jack comes in through uh, the bathroom door to kill his wife, Wendy, right? But that, like in the movie, he comes into the bathroom and actually kills her, right? But that doesn't happen in here. When he survives, then he survives. It's only Jack that gets killed. I don't know, like, so there were a lot of things different from what I remember from the movie, which was quite a big surprise because I went into this thinking, okay, I maybe don't remember every detail, but I for sure remember, like, the basic plot, the most important things. But that didn't even end up being true necessarily because a lot of things were different. But it was also Stephen King who wrote um, the screenplay for 
uh, The Shining, the movie, so I guess all changes that were made, like, he consented to them as he wrote it. And maybe that was his plan to have the movie and the book be kind of different, so people would not only see the movie, but still end up reading the book. I don't know. I don't know. Now, tying it back to that overall question I asked in the beginning of the book, like, would I respect respect this book recommendation by non-book lover Joy Tribbiani. Um, I mean, The Shining by Stephen King, even if you're not a horror lover as me, it is a classic in the genre. So with someone's only book they ever read being a classic, it's kind of harder to judge, I feel like. If it's like a completely random book, kind of, I think it can tell you more about the person than if they pick a classic as their favorite book of all times such as Rachel like her favorite book is Little Women but that again that's a classic that's like a literal classic this is like a horror classic the other one is like a literal classic and it's kind of hard to like really judge a person's taste I guess off of the book if that book is a classic and that's the only book they ever read but if we talk generally about this what would I think about a person who says that they only ever read Stephen King's novels. Uh, I don't want to be like that, but I think to me that is a bit of a red flag, to be really honest. Like, if I met a guy and he would be like, I only read Stephen King, I'm not interested in anything else, I would be kind of taken aback, but A, I would give him the benefit of the doubt and I would be like, mm, so why is that? And I mean, if he could explain it in like the sense that, oh yeah, he really likes the psychological element of all these like psychotic murders going on etc maybe i could get it but if the sole reason for him liking stephen king novels would be like the more psychotic the more brutal a murder is going on the better i like it hell yeah that would be a red flag for me for sure i'm not saying that people who like stephen king are psychotics themselves i mean obviously not i'm not going there but if a person only ever wanted to read stuff like that well maybe it does say something but i mean if i already think that about people who like really really like stephen king what do i think about the author himself Ooh, no like let's disconnect that from stephen king as a person but if there's an author who makes it his life's work to write not one, not two, but more books than years he has lived on this planet about the most psychotic mayhems, murders, brutality, horrors of all kind. I mean, come on, that does say something about a person, about a character. I don't think I'm reaching too far with this one. That does say something. And I wonder what. I mean, I am no authority to answer this question and I'm not saying there is like a right or wrong answer to this. Everyone can have their own opinion about it, but I mean, I do suppose professionals like psychologists, psychiatrists, they would probably have to say a word or two about that. But that's not at all what this video is about. We kind of deteriorated from the subject of Joey Tribbiani. I guess I like it more about Joey that he also ended up really liking Little Women considering this is like his favorite book, the only book he ever consents to read. But other than that, I guess the charm of Joey Tribbiani is not that he is a reader. Anyway, that was my reading vlog on Stephen King. I did not really answer any of the questions I posed, like neither did I answer which team of the do I respect the opinion or don't I of a non-book lover's book recommendation. I didn't answer that one and I only ended up raising even more questions about Stephen King as a person, but no, honestly, this is not supposed to be disrespectful towards Stephen King or any people who love Stephen King novels. Those were just like some thoughts that I voiced out loud, but um, I do think they're legitimate, but honestly, to each their own, like literally to each their own. So that was that. You know, I had an okay time reading this, it is gripping, of course, but then again, these horror books, they're just a bit too psychotic for me. I could never read Stephen King novels only. I'm not saying that I'm never going to read another Stephen King ever again, but if I do, it's going to be a long time from now because I need a break. Personally, that's just a bit too... <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> okay, 
for me but hey you do you anyway but that's basically everything i have to say i hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it i'm gonna see you in the next one bye